Hello and welcome back to Build a CubeSat. I'm Manuel. So today I would like to talk a little more about the preliminary specs I have in mind for my CubeSat. Let's have a look. So we are back in the project overview document, which you can also check out yourself. The link is in the description. And if we look at the bus first and uh, the structure here, I would like to build a 2U cube set without tuna cans, which may sound weird, but it will make more sense once we look at the um, QSAT, CubeSat standards document in the next video. So the overall dimension will be 227 by 100 by 100 millimeters, and it should weigh less than 4 kilograms, which is a, a reasonable mass budget, I think. RF-wise, um, I think I already mentioned this in the last video as well, but um, I'm kind of betting on the availability of um, DTC technology in about 10 years, which stands for direct to sell, um, meaning you have a, a small LTE modem basically, which can um, connect to, uh, to satellites directly. Because otherwise, I don't think I will be able to implement a whole um, high bandwidth uh, radio system myself. And yeah, a lot of this project hinges on the availability of um, DTC modems. But of course, we also need a low bandwidth um, amateur UHF radio connection. Um, first of all, for the beacon, which is uh, the signal the satellite starts to transmit after a certain amount of time has elapsed after deployment. Um, this has the purpose um, that you want to be able to identify which of the satellites that were deployed is yours. So if you found your satellite and uh, you have kind of locked on the beacon, you can uh, switch into a higher bandwidth, but still pretty low bandwidth, <coughs> excuse me, radio mode for the TTNC, the telemetry tracking and control. At least I think that's the idea. So next up is GNC, uh, which stands for Guidance, Navigation and Control. Um, I think positioning via GPS and sun or star sensors is a reasonable way to go here. Also attitude determination via an M IMU, an inertial measurement unit, which is also called a gyroscope, basically the same device you have in your phone. And then I would like to implement active attitude control via magnet torquers. So a magnet torquer is basically a coil. We could actually go look at some of them. There is this site called satsearch.co where you can um, uh, look at and, and inquire about um, off-the-shelf satellite parts. Magnet torque. If we if we search for magnet torquer here, I'm sure we'll find some examples. Yeah, let's make this a bit smaller, like this. So there are various configurations um, for various purposes. Let's maybe look at uh, a complete system. This looks promising. Yeah, that this is basically what I uh, would like to to probably build myself, because as you can see here, they are kind of expensive. I mean, it's it's still affordable for a satellite part, but you know, it's still kind of a lot of money. Um, the way they work is that they have these coils um, and you can apply a, a voltage to this coil, which will generate a magnetic field, which then um, kind of pushes against the Earth's magnetic field and this imparts a momentum on the CubeSat. So if you have three of these coils, you have a, um, rotational control in three axes. So I think hardware-wise, this is feasible to, to build yourself. Certainly not trivial, but feasible, I hope. But I think the hard part will be figuring out the software to um, control the, the the actual torque in order to achieve any kind of you know um, position um, uh, rotational accuracy. So that's uh, definitely an interesting and fascinating thing. All right, um, going back, I will definitely not attempt to um, 
implement any kind of propulsion on this because it's just very expensive and dangerous and uh, immensely complex. So let's maybe not try this on the first CubeSat. Deployables, um, I think the few deployables the better. So I would only like to have um, kind of tape measure style fold out uh, antennas for the UHF system. Then the power budget is something I, I will have to figure out. I'm absolutely not sure yet about this. Imaging capabilities on the bus. Um, I, I don't think there will be any unless you count the star or sun sensors as um, imaging devices. And of course, there will need to be some kind of uh, microcontroller to, to control all of this. Um, now, moving on to the payload, I think I have also mentioned this in the last video. Um, I would like to have a primary payload, which would be mine, and also a secondary hosted payload that would uh, be somebody else's. Um, I would like to have some kind of collaboration there. So the primary payload, what I would like to do with this is basically just um, capture and set, send back some imagery stills or maybe video yeah that's kind of the whole thing so i i will just like to i would like to implement a, a camera system nothing too fancy and um, i don't think i'm going for high resolution um, because this is not an, an earth observation kind of project um, and i would like to avoid the whole licensing thing that comes with a high resolution satellite imaging uh, I would like to have a reasonable dynamic range though, um, in order to get back um, some nice imagery of our planet. Um, I do like the FLIR Blackfly um, line of cameras. They're very small, compact board cameras, but of course this is uh, something that I'll need to figure out. Compute-wise, nothing fancy, something like a Raspberry Pi compute module will be plenty, if this is even feasible um, power and heat-wise. And again, um, for the RF, I'm counting on the DTC technology. So, um, about the second, uh, the hosted payload, I think I will only start approaching people about this um, as soon as I'm reasonably confident that I can um, pull any of this off at all. So, yeah. Then, of course, um, there will be um, safety and security features like the um, remove before flight feature that every CubeSat needs to have or every satellite or any spacecraft needs to have and the deployment switches which will um, keep the, the whole system inactive um, while it's still in the deployer. Yeah. About the orbital profile, um, low earth orbit uh, is kind of the only thing I know about this right now, um, I think it will largely depend on which right chair, on where the right chair goes, I, I will be flying on. Um, yeah, this, this will, that's not um, at the very top of the list of my worries right now. Um, service life of this, of this satellite is another thing. Uh, I think um, sustainability is, is an important topic in general and for me. So I would like, I would really like to avoid uh, creating any more um, space debris. So this thing will probably have a rather short service life of one to two years. But of course, um, I will need to figure out a way to demonstrate that it will only have this short life. So observed standards, uh, first and foremost, the CubeSat standard. But I'm sure there will be more that I would like to compile into a list here. Now let's talk about the budget. Um, I would like to keep this reasonably affordable in order to make it more accessible to more people. But of course, anything space related is going to be kind of expensive. Um, so my aspirational total budget for the whole thing, including launch and everything is $10,000. Um, this may be a very naive, uh, <laughs> Um, a goal, but it's what I'm working towards at the moment. Uh, for manufacturing one satellite, I budgeted $2,500. Uh, 
Um, there is this um, channel called Archie Set. Uh, fantastic channel. I, I watched every video and enjoyed them all very much. And that person um, attempted to design a satellite, a CubeSat, for with a budget of um, uh, one thousand dollars, which I think is very little money for a CubeSat. But I don't know. So I just went for twenty five hundred for the hardware, which is the electronics, the structure, basically the physical CubeSat itself. Testing and integration will heavily depend on the market on what is being offered uh, in 10 years time. I kind of ballparked it at two, uh, $2,000. I would like to um, maybe have some kind of a partnership with the, with the university um, that, that would have uh, testing equipment, which I could maybe use for a small fee. Now, the, <laughs> aside from the DTC technology being available in 10 years time, Launch getting a lot cheaper is my second big assumption that I'm making for this project. Um, right now, I think it's a major part of um, the budget of any cubes admission, but I am reasonably confident that it will become a lot more affordable in 10 years. So I actually have started um, a list of things that may come back to bite me. And yeah, counting on DTC te technology and on launch becoming affordable are definitely on this list. So um, concerning the ground station, that should be a pretty uh, simple and affordable thing to implement. I just put $500 in here. Yeah. And again, the aspirational time frame is launching no earlier than 2035. All right. Um, did we forget anything? No, I think that's all for the moment. So in the next video, uh, we will be looking at the uh, CubeSat standard. Yeah, thank you very much for watching. Um, let me know if you like this episode and I will see you in the next one.